Hi everybody, good morning, Jean here. Hope you've had a nice weekend. Um, today we're gonna, I'm gonna be showing you probably one of the easiest things you'll have ever made and you'll feel really um, accomplished when you do it. Um, coming up to uh, the holiday season or when you get together with families, what do we like table runners? Now, I've made this table runner, um, if you look on YouTube, tons of times, if you look on YouTube and you YouTube 10 minute table runner or last minute table runner, you'll see a table runner that looks similar to this, all right? But the difference is it's just made with two pieces of fabric, that's all. And um, it's so dead easy to make. It literally is four seams and a bit of top stitching, and that's it. Um, I have made, I, I'm not going to show you, I have made the 10-minute table runner with just the two pieces of fabric, and it's a little bit flimsy because all it is is two pieces of fabric made in this way, um, in this sewing method. And I, I've made them, and it's like, I don't know, if you, if you blow on them, they sort of like ruck up and wave. So what I was looking, I was looking at my, my runners that I had made, and I thought, is there any way I can make them with um, quilted, with an actual piece of batting in it? So I sort of went back to the drawing board, and it's just exactly the exact same um, method of construction as the one that's just two pieces of fabric. So that's what we're going to be doing. But I wanted to be showing you, um, maybe I'll show you up close and when it's done, this, these table runners. Um, all you're going to, I'll be telling you what you're going to need. You're all, all you're going to be needing is three, three batting and two pieces of fabric. I'll give you the measurements. Um, and each, each table runner because, uh, works up a little bit different in measurement size because fabric size is, is, is uh, like selvage to selvage is different. So we have this configuration here. You can't see it, but this center piece is quilted, and this is a bit heavier because of the construction, and I'll show you. Um, and then this is just the two pieces of fabric. I'll show you what I mean. So there's like a dark one. Um, it could be reversible, and not just for a table, for like a console table, for an end table, uh, for a dressing table. I made that one. They literally take 10 minutes. Um, there's this one that I had made. This has like the damask in the center and more of a dark and it's actually quilted and it has some substance to it. It's a quilted little quilt um, that takes literally 10 minutes and I, it's quite effective. So there's that one and look at the. It's very interesting that I cut the almost the exact same measurements, but this one, if you can see, is the, 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 the red one is bigger because of the, the fabric. It doesn't really matter. So there's no um, rhyme or reason. They're all sort of this size using the, um, the, the measurements I'm giving you. Then I made this, this one, which is a real sweet, again, it's quilted inside. It's more of like a country theme that has watermelon, watermelon fabric. I got this fabric literally about 20 years ago. Um, and I got a whole bunch of it that I, cause I liked it so much. Um, and I'm using it bit by bit. It's just a lovely watermelon, real fresh. And then I use sort of a homespunny check inside. Um, I made this runner, and actually this fabric, selvage to selvage, was much longer. Interesting. And I made this a little bit wider, but I'll tell you how you can do a variation of it. So there's this inside. But then I was looking and I thought, why couldn't I cut them in half and make placemats? So I did. So it's just a little... It's, it's a silly little thing. Um, you literally cut this in half and do the exact same thing to get this point here. But that's the magic of this table runner, um, this point. And I'm going to be showing, oh, I made another blue one, more, more um, like a sunflower blue, more of a country French, a little bit bigger, a little bit wider. But the measurements I'm going to be giving you for a standard one is... You, now you're going to need, oh, let me get that. You're going to need um, a, for lack of better, I'll use the smaller one. You're going to need two pieces of fabric, obviously. And think about it, you're going to need your border, as it were, your border fabric, and then your inside fabric. Or actually, if you, 
You can make them all one look, but the whole look of this is because of the contrast. So you're going to need two pieces of fabric. This is the miracle of it. The inside piece, to make one longer and thinner, you need nine inches of fabric. I use nine inches of fabric. And I used the nine inches of fabric, and I made this, this size runner. This is nine inches of fabric in here. And then this bit here, the darker bit here, you use, selvage to selvage, a half a yard, 18 inches of fabric. That's all you need. So I, I'm, I've chosen this like um, a holiday themed uh, for a holiday table, pumpkins and, and, and leaves and sunflowers. And then for a contrast, I like the idea of a, a real nice contrast. I have this sort of orange and yellow to, to make the contrast pop. And then what you say so you need nine inches and 18 inches. And then of batting, you need another nine inches of batting by 45 or whatever it is. And that the ends don't really matter. Just cut it 45 or 44, whatever your fabric is, because we're going to trim them down. So that's it. So I'm going to be showing you how to construct this with four seams and a bit of top stitching. So let me, um, let me show you that. Here are my three pieces of fabric that we're going to be using for this table runner. Now what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to put, you're going to take, you're going to unfold with the right side up, the pretty side up of your fabric, the lengthwise on your table. Then you want to take your contrasting fabric, right sides together, pretty side down on the top edge of this uh, 18 inch piece wide of fabric. Now don't worry if your edges, this is right off of the bolt, interesting, and this one is, this selvage, I don't know if you can see it, this selvage is much longer, but don't worry about that. In fact, if you'd have it very much different, just come back and trim it. We're going to be trimming it anyway. So we have basically a, um, a fairly, fairly, um, uh, even right sides together. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your, t your, your piece of batting end to end, which also has been cut, and, and you're going to line up the top edge very carefully with the top two layers. Now, again, look, my batting is a little bit different, so I'll just cut that bit off. Again, we're not worrying about the ends, but that's where we're going to start sewing. Now, you might want to pin this. I, I don't necessarily because it just holds together really well. But you'll probably want to pin it all these three layers together. So I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine. And I'm going to pin these three layers together. I'm going to sew these three layers together. Excuse me. I've bought my little, little um, sandwich over here. And I'm going to be stitching. This is where I've pinned it. I'm going to be stitching at the end, um, starting at the end of this. I've, I'm using a dark thread because my fabric is black. I will be changing it because actually I'm going to be quilting the inside, which I'll, I'll be changing it to white, but I'll show you that. So this is a maybe slightly bigger than a quarter of an inch. This doesn't, it, it, it's, it's, the quarter of an inch doesn't really matter. It's just slightly bigger. We're just sewing this down, matching up these edges. And I'm just going to sew this one seam all the way down. Making sure these, all, all the three edges are matching up. And you don't really have to worry about the ends because we're going to be trimming that. I'll show you why. Just off the end. Oops. Now, what we're going to do is hopefully you can see it. 
we're going to take this end that we've just the 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 proud end here this is nice and smooth right and this is i made this slightly i made it just a hair less than the nine inches um but uh, but that's that's fine you're just going to take these ends here and you're going to bring them over to this side here okay pretty side together obviously this piece is smaller this nine inch piece is smaller than your 18 inch piece obviously but what you want to do is you want to just take that over you can just do it on the side as you're sitting here at the sewing machine making sure your your edges at the top are, are um fairly str uh, even and then what you want to do is you want to you want to pin that you can go over to your table if you're more comfortable like we did but i do it right here you just want to start pinning your three edges together this is your second seam your batting your nine inch piece and your 18 inch piece so I've just add put them together and I'm going to stitch that down and then I'll show you what we're going to do so I've sewn the the long pieces together the long ends together of on the um, nine inch piece the batting piece and the uh the 18 inch piece and you come out with something something like this okay now what you want to do is you want to reach inside and you're just going to turn it inside out you're going to turn this inside out and the batting will have been attached and you come up with a bordered little quilt <laughs> Now, what you're going to do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this over, very, very important. I'm going to take it over to my ironing board. And even if you, you know me and my ironing, but even if you don't like to iron, to make this really lay flat, what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to make sure that this border here that's miraculously appeared because of the construction method is the same as this one over here. Now, I will say that this piece, this piece of fabric here, because it's just fabric, as it were, as opposed to the quilted piece, is a little bit wavy. It's not out of bias or anything, but it is a little bit wavy. So you're really wanting, you're really gonna want it to go over, and I'll show you how I do it on my ironing board. You really want to go over and starch this. It does lay nice and flat. I'll show you my finished look how lovely and flat that is laying this is exactly constructed the same way so this piece here is just the fabric just two pieces of fabric and the inside is quilted but this is just the fabric but when it's once it's pressed and starched and it just lays beautifully and that's the whole thing with a table runner you want it to lay nice and flat so i find this method without putting the the um batting all the way to the end because i'd actually experimented it and i've the way it's constructed the batting is at this end and it is thick it is thick there's like two layers of batting and two layers of fabric so when we go to stitch this this is thick here this point but it's okay because that's just the point this is where things your your candles your your plates are going to be going and then this here over here is just laying beautifully so that's the way it's constructed now we're going to be taking this over to the ironing board and i'll show you exactly how i'm going to iron it So I've brought this over to the ironing board and you can see the magic of how this is constructed with our center piece in here. Now you can pretty much eyeball the um, two borders as it were, but this is where I come along and I use either a sizing or a spray starch and I'll go right down to let that dry a bit and I'll just pull out making sure the back is nice and flat and the seams here of, of your batting are just pressed that way 
and then you just start ironing it. This is, this is ironing. You really want to iron this flat because that's the whole beauty of a well-made table runner. That it's not rucking up, it's not all over the place, and it's nice and flat. And if you've constructed it this way, you'll see that it'll be lovely and flat. So you just go along, smoothing, smoothing, making sure these are equal. There's my contrasting fabric. And this, this will be quilted, but I'll show you how. Just three, uh, three or four little quilting stitches and then um, it will be done. You want to make sure that this lays nice and flat, that seam, this seam here. You can feel it. It's pushing towards that side. And just keep pulling it out and smoothing it. Just go along. A bit more starch. I was looking at this thinking, <laughs> it's a bordered quilt. Interesting, you can make quilts this way. I don't know, probably not. But for this little runner, it's really quite amazing. Now I'll take it back and I'll show it to, to my table and I'll show you how we get rid of these ends and what the next step is. Now I have my pressed runner here. I've, I've, I've ironed the whole length of it. Now what I want to do is I want to bring the uh, wrong sides together or the right sides together. It doesn't really matter at this point. But what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be getting rid of that this bulk here. I don't know if this, this is about 10 pieces of fabric. I don't know if my machine, my cutter will do it. Um, but if it doesn't, I have another rotary cutter. Um, yeah, we just want to get rid of all this, figure out where your selvage is and all of this rubbish here. And it's, if it's an inch or an inch and a half in, it doesn't really matter. Um, no, it's not going to do it. Um, so you just go back with a rotary cutter because it's going to go through a lot of material. Yeah, and you just take off all of this stuff. So now what we have are perfectly, are perfectly even ends of our, of our table runner. Now this is what, this is the next step. This is the third seam. You're going to turn it over. You're going to put the right, the pretty side of the fabric, smoothing it all the while, pretty sides together on this end because you've cut it nice and straight. What you want to do is you're going to, you're going to stitch. Hope you can see it. You're going to stitch right along there on that seam. It's a little bit thick. It is a bit bulky with the, with the batting, but your machine will be able to do it. What you want to do is you want to make sure you start very, very uh, carefully at this end um, and keep these edges together. That's very important. And just come and stitch to that end. And I'm going to be doing that. And you're going to come back over on your other side and you're going to do the exact same thing. And it's the exact same size. So you're going to be doing the exact same thing on this side. So, so I've stitched together my ends here. Uh, you can see I use the black thread. And what you want to do, I stitched together both ends of this runner here. And I did back stitch here. Not necessarily uh, necessary, but I did anyway. Now what you want to do is with a nice pair of sharp scissors, you want to take off just a little bit of that bulk. Just a little bit of a, a, a diamond shape there. And there's no bulk here because it's just the fabric, but just right down to that stitching. I can see it, it's, even though it's black fabric, just a little bit right to there, but here, just take off a bulk like that. Now, if any of you followed along with my um, Dresden plate tutorial, <laughs> you'll see what is, I'm, what's happening here. You're going to take your finger or your thumb, you're going to go right up into that point there, and you're going to push that seam around 
and you're going to push it inside out like so pushing that it's bulky but that's okay because that sort of anchors the end of this table runner and make sure that seam is nice and sort of to one side and look look what we have look at that what we have we have a table runner so you're going to center this eyeball it where the center of your your quilt is as it were and and press it nice really nice and well i'm going to come back and we're going to do the other bit and we're going to make that point that a lot of that bulk's been taken away push it up as much as you can bring it towards you like that smooth that seam either way whichever way it's going this one's going that way and then just just center that eyeball it where it wants to go and then press it really good now what we're going to do is i'm going to take this over to my machine and i'm going to show you how i actually um i'm going to have to have a, a thread change i'm going to stitch it it's almost done i'm going to stitch it along here in the black thread and then along on this end on the black thread and there, there's our table runner it's done I mean it's it's amazing but also what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be top stitching I'm going to go up about half an inch I like the bit of a bit of a chunkierness um, it's it's thick here but you can do it a top stitch about half an inch along and all the way back down there but then with my white thread I'm going to come back with white thread to to stitch the um, inside I'm going to stitch it from here all the way down the middle just one and then this seam along here but I'll show you I'll show you um, how I've stitched it and and then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna size it again spray it again after it's all done and make sure it's all lovely and flat and there you have it me chatting 10 minutes literally what a nice little gift but I'll show you my stitching when I'm done my stitching so because I've used black thread, I haven't shown you, um, you can't really see where I've, I've top stitched it. But what I've done is maybe you can see along here, it's a, a good bit, a good half inch away. This is thick. I quite like that because it's, it sort of grounds that, um, this end here. Um, and I've actually stitched in black along here. Perhaps you can see it. There's my quilting stitch there. It's really a nice quilted stitch. And then I've come along and I secured that end down with the black. And I've come right along, right along all the way down with the black into this V here. And I've done that. But because I have a color change of um, thread, uh, of fabric, I should say, I'm going to change my, my thread. Now I want to, I'm going to eyeball where I'm going to quilt this. My, my, my thing's done, except for what, three, one, two, three, four, five more rows of stitching, and it's done. So what you do is I'm going to come along on this point here, and with my white thread, my cream thread, I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up, and do it, just do it, do it, and I'm just going to eyeball it, remember, right in front of you. I'm just going to smooth it all out. I'm going to eyeball this stitching. Holding my fabric. I'm just going to eyeball it till I get to the other end. And then I'm just going to do that right. And I've eyeballed it pretty good because here comes this here comes this stitching that I've already done. So I'm just going to stitch to that point. And just stop my stitching along there and uh, do the exact same thing um, here on this. Just I'm just going to do a quilting stitch there and then just secure this here. And then so there, folks, is our finished table runner. I mean, seriously, how effective is that? It's quilted on the back side, 
if you can see I've quilted it along here. Now I was thinking um, if, if some of you would like to do a, a more of a diagonal quilting stitch or a smaller quilting stitch in here, it's up to you. I just do the long stitches because it's quick and it's, it's, a, it's a, um, a, a, a horizontal, your, your table mat's going, your eyes going across. That's what I like to do, but by all means, um, you, you know, do whatever quilting stitch in a grid, um, whatever, it's up to you. I've just secured it along here, along here, I've just continued this with my white thread along here, there, and there. Now, what you also can do is I bought these. Um, these are rights. They're little, um, let me just see, they're little tassels. Um, yeah, let's see what these look like. Yeah, they're little tassels. So at the end, I think what I'll do, I'll just secure it somehow to the end and make a... Um, make a little a little tassel on the end to make it like a true little you know like almost a purchase table runner you could put what I've done in the past you can put a button here um, you can embellish these this end perhaps you know not where you want to put your candles or whatever but you could put a button here or a little you know bedazzle it right there or something or even here um, or put your tassels where whatever maybe two tassels um, but you're you're not limited just by your imagination so that's my little table runner so there's our table runner and uh, how long did that take not not long at all um, and I hope I've explained it fairly quickly the reason I say that is I'm a little I'm a little bummed this morning and I shouldn't be I shouldn't really be because uh it's to be expected, but I came down and I got a fairly nasty comment on my uh, my YouTube channel. I understand that there's billions of people out there, um, but I, I, you know, I talk too much and uh, I gave her a headache. I was a one out of ten, and I understand that so many of you are so very very kind to me and enjoy my babbling because I I do babble and I was thinking about it. Um, I'm not a public speaker. I'm not a teacher. As you know, I couldn't stay in school. Um, I didn't like the teaching environment. And I just, I was just hoping that people could come in my sewing room and, and uh, as opposed to some of the other hundreds of tutorials. Um, she said my tutorials are extremely unorganized. And I thought, oh, maybe they are. I, 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 but I'm not going to apologize to it. But I thought, I thought people have too much time. <laughs> They're sitting behind a keyboard. I go on YouTube and I, I see someone who I think, oh my word, like, she didn't explain that very well. Would I ever take the time or the energy to type something quite nasty? People do. And my children were saying, Mom, you have to be aware when you start this that you're going to get nasty comments. And, and I've gotten two. I, I, and I've gotten hundreds of lovely comments, and for that, I just wanted to thank you very much. And the other, the other nasty comment, I don't quite remember it, um, because I, I quickly deleted it, and I deleted her. <laughs> I think I told you that before, and I did that this morning also. But it does sting a little bit. That, and I'm thinking, well, you know, if you, if, if you don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just in my sewing room teaching someone how to make a silly little table runner. You know, it, I, I'm not. I'm not trying to, and I'm, I'm not pursuing the Nobel Peace Prize. Um, as I said, I'm not. I'm not a. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm not. Um, I'm just trying to, you know, impart the little knowledge I know, in a conversational way. I have ADD. I'm a little bit all over the place. I've explained that. But why can't somebody just say, "Oh, I don't want to watch her," and go somewhere else? Why do they have to have the um, urge to tell you that you're a loser? So I'm a little bit bummed, but I'm not, I've said it before, I'm not searching for compliments. Please, please, I, I know you appreciate it, and I appreciate the people who appreciate me. I've said that tons of times before, um, but it just sort of got me down this morning. I'm having a bad day. But anyway, we made, we made a lovely little silly table runner. I'm going to put my tassel on it. It's pretty. Um... So this is the most, I would say, literally, this is the easiest thing you'll ever want to do. And it's effective. It's quilted. You've made a little quilt in about 10 minutes. So have at it. Have fun. And everybody, that's not hate. That's love. And if we can't love, just ignore and go on. 
So thanks anyway, folks. Thanks for watching and listening to me. Bye.